This is Dorothea McKellar. My country, the love of field and coppice, of green shaded lanes, of ordered woods and gardens is running in your veins. Strong love of grey blue distance, brown streams and soft dim skies. I know but cannot share it. My love is otherwise. I love the sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons. I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. The tragic ring-bark forests, dark white beneath the moon, the sapphire-misted mountains, the hot gold hush of noon, green tangle of the brushes where light lianas coil, and orchids deck the treetops and ferns the crimson soil. Core of my heart, my country, her pitiless blue sky, when sick at heart, around us we see the cattle die, but then the grey clouds gather, and we can bless again the drumming of an army, the steady soaking rain. Poor of my heart, my country, the land of rainbow gold, for flood and fire and famine, she pays us back threefold. Over the thirsty paddocks watch, after many days, the filmy veil of greenness that thickens as we gaze. An opal-hearted country, a willful, lavish land. All you who have not loved her, you will not understand. The earth holds many splendors, wherever I may die. I know to what brown country my homing thoughts will fly. The Dorothy McKellar Poetry Awards is a unique national project which gives Australia's youth a voice as they strive for excellence in creating their own literature. We encourage our students to capture their own hopes, dreams, feelings and experiences in a variety of poetic genres. Poetry evokes imaginative awareness, starting with the writer and then finishing with the audience. Writing a poem is a unique literary process because a novel idea or unforgettable emotional response can be explored in a word, art form that engages both the writer and the reader. Or perhaps it will be tucked away as too personal to share just yet. I believe that when a student becomes acquainted with the tools of poetry, when they follow the many catalysts for responding with a human soul to delights and tragedies, then they have a means of communicating not only for their own satisfaction, but also as a gift with individual articulations that are so rich and so rare. everybody and welcome to the 2021 Dorothy McKellar Poetry Awards. I'm Philippa Murray, most people call me Pip and I chair the organising committee of these national awards. I'm speaking to you from my home near Gunnedah, northwest New South Wales where the awards are based. We're really proud to be continuing a tradition that began 37 years ago. Lockdowns and restrictions have thrown up obstacles, but we were determined to proceed with this occasion. So, for the second year running, we've created an online presentation ceremony, which we hope you will enjoy. Our production crew was unable to travel to film this event, so we've enlisted help of all sorts and used a little bit of DIY to bring what we believe will still be a memorable event. We also want to share a special part of Australia with you all, of which Dorothy and McKellar wrote about 
and to where she was a frequent visitor. I've been in this role for a while now, but I never cease to be impressed by the talent of so many young poets across Australia. This year was no exception. It is the rich rewards of reading these wonderful poems that drives teachers and parents, I'm sure, and indeed the writers themselves to pen their thoughts and share them with a wider audience. Let's start with a welcome to country. Yama everyone. My name's Marley and I'm a local Gomorrah woman. I'm from Gunnedah, New South Wales. And today I'd like to welcome you all here in traditional Gomorrah language, and then I'll translate it into English. Gaba, Buliagu, Yama, Yamande. Naya, Gir, Nangu, Duran, Nay, Gamilare. Nama, Yalagimawu, Wurugu, Nale, Garage, Yiladu, Gagi, Gadabul, Yada. Hello and welcome. I'd like to welcome you all on tr to traditional Kamilaroi land and pay my respects to the elders both past and present and extend that to any Aboriginal people watching today. Yalu. Here are some quick messages. Firstly from our patrons, Mark Vale, who's the chair of Whitehaven Coal and former Deputy Prime Minister, and author and journalist, Susan Duncan. They'll be followed by the Federal Minister for Regional Education, Bridget McKenzie, whose government is our primary sponsor, and her New South Wales counterpart, Sarah Mitchell, who is a proud Gunnedah girl and a former participant in this competition. Hi, it's Mark Bale here. Uh, I have the honour of being the patron of the Dorothea McKellar Society, uh, the organisation that uh, uh, manages and runs the Dorothea McKellar Poetry Awards. Firstly, can I say thank you and congratulations to all the young budding poets across Australia. Uh, about 7,500 of them have entered in this year's competition. Uh, we thank you for the participation. Of course, uh, Dorothea McKellar was, was famous for her poetry, particularly focusing on the adversities that we face in Australia. And of course, today, just like then, uh, in recent years, we've had drought, we've had fire, bushfires, uh, we've had floods, and of course, now we've been beset with the uh, global pandemic of COVID-19. So I'm sure that there's uh, been ample material for all you young budding poets to work on in this year's competition. Uh, can I also thank the organisers uh, of the competition this year. Uh, it's uh, a particularly a little bit more challenging than normal given uh, the, uh, uh, the advent of the pandemic uh, and managing the whole competition on, on a virtual platform. Nonetheless, it's fantastic to see so many entries have come in from all across Australia. We wish you all the very, very best and thank you for your contributions uh, to this year's competition. A moment ago, curious, I looked up the meaning of the word poem in the dictionary. A composition of high beauty, thought, or language and artistic form, anything supremely harmonious and satisfying. Words have power. They shape who we are and what we stand for. And words shaped into poetry can inspire and console for generations. Haven't we all lately been comforted by Dorothea McKellar's evocative ode to Australia and every hardship and miracle this country throws at us? How wonderful to think that these poetry awards are keeping alive the tradition and the pursuit of beauty in the shape of words. I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking at the Dorothea McKellar Poetry Award Ceremony today. The very first uh, poem that I had to learn back in the 70s at Benalla Reeves Primary uh, was a Dorothy McKellar piece that I've never actually forgotten. I'd like to acknowledge the Dorothy McKellar Memorial Society, teachers, parents and guardians who continue to encourage our young Australians to take up this poetry challenge and to every single student who entered this year and put your creativity to the test. Thank you. Congratulations and well done. It's fitting that this year's theme, optional of course, was rich and rare. Poetry is powerful. It allows each of us, even in difficult times, to use our creativity, express in writing what's important to us. 
Our experiences this past year may have led many of us to redefine what it is that makes us rich and what we see or appreciate as rare. This year, it was truly a competitive year for the poetry competition, which is great, with almost 7,500 entries submitted. Congratulations to all the award winners and the runners-up in each category. Most of all, I encourage all of you to keep dreaming, keep creating, and keep writing. Thanks. Hi, everybody. My name's Sarah Mitchell, and I'm the Minister for Education and Early Childhood Learning in New South Wales. Today, I join you from Gamilaroi land, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'm so happy to be here today to support the Dorothea McKellar Poetry Awards. Writing poetry enables our young people to develop their critical and creative thinking skills and also to explore the power of words to express their thoughts and their feelings. As both the oldest and the largest poetry competition in Australia for school students, the Dorothea McKellar Awards play such an important role in fostering a love of poetry among school children not only here in New South Wales, but throughout the entire country. I think this year's theme of rich and rare is pretty timely during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a one in 100 year event. As we all keep saying, it really is an unprecedented time that has seen so much about the way we live change. And while our experiences over the past year may have been different to what we had anticipated or different to each other, I'm sure that many of the students and indeed many of the poems have been inspired by the changes that we have gone through as individuals, as communities and as a society. I'm really proud to support the Dorothea McKellar Poetry Awards and in particular support all of the students who participate. Poetry can be such a powerful way for you to express yourself and to show the world your talents. And I have to say, speaking of talent, I am consistently amazed by the high level of standards that we have in the competition. Honestly, we have some very, very talented students from right across Australia taking part this year. I'm really fortunate to live right here in the beautiful town of Gunnedah in regional Australia, where a bronze statue of Dorothea McKellar herself was erected in 1983. And it still remains a monument that our town and community is very proud of. The following year, there were 300 poems entered into the competition. And now, of course, the competition attracts tens of thousands of entries, a remarkable achievement. So congratulations to all of the students who entered this year's Dorothea McKellar Poetry Awards and a big congratulations to the winners. Well done to you all. You will now witness some extraordinary literary talent as we come to the prize winners. Despite all the hurdles thrown up, which everyone has dealt with in their own way, I'm excited to say that our entries have held at 7,600 from across Australia. They've held through the stop-start school year, some of you have experienced, and I like to think that these poets found some solace and comfort in being able to write about their emotions and subjects that interested them. I should also mention the trophies, which are unique to the Dorothy McKellar Poetry Awards. Each year we invite a local artist to create trophies for the winners. This year it seemed appropriate to ask Marie Kelly, whose artwork was used to illustrate the optional theme, Rich and Rare. Marie's work reflects the local landscape, its seasons, soil, trees and rivers. She has painted a series of individual works, and I think you'll agree they are very special. I was really honoured this year to be asked to, to create some, uh, some artworks for the Dorothea McKellar Prizes. We're just doing small works. I was particularly keen to paint landscapes from the Gunnedah area. Um, I was also um, interested in light, and different times of day and, and different colours that we can see. My studio is perched um, up high on the farm and it's on the western end of of Long Mountain and it basically overlooks the, the plains country of the Mukai and Nemoi rivers. I have a panoramic view of, of the plains country but I'm also um, able to see some beautiful rocky art crops and lots of different types of vegetations, uh, farming country, um, 
a beautiful, beautiful view out of every window in, in my space. So I'm, I'm really lucky to, to have the space that I do. It's lovely to be able to look out and be inspired by the landscape around me all the time. I experimented a little with um, different media and I have incorporated some gold foil, copper foil and silver foil just to sort of a little bit more extra dimension uh, to than just the flat surface. The Society's always been so good in, in supporting local artists um, and it's, it's a, a lovely, lovely honour to be asked to, to create some artworks for prizes this year. Best place to talk about the poetry are our judges, who are eminent children's authors in their own right. It's a difficult and time-consuming job, and they've given total dedication to their roles, for which we are extremely thankful. Judging the primary sections is Michelle Taylor. Michelle is a Brisbane-based author who writes for children, young adults, and the young at heart. With seven books under her belt, Michelle is also a mum and an occupational therapist. She says that writing makes her braver and more creative in all the other jobs she does. Hello, I'm Michelle Taylor. I'm coming to you from Mianjin, Brisbane. The traditional custodians of this land are the Turrbal and the Yuggera Nations peoples. And I pay my respects to elders past present and emerging. So, wow, I have had an incredible journey judging and reading close to 5,000 poems from the young people of primary school age across our country. You have offered insights to me into each and every one of your worlds so many different topics from those inner worlds of self-acceptance confidence belonging and all of those big emotions such as fear and joy and sadness and courage and then there were big topics out there in the world the pandemic first nations cultures the fires the droughts, farming. You questioned, you expressed outrage, you confronted difficult truths, and you called for equity, peace, and greater care and understanding for others, for our environment, and for the climate. You made this judge laugh out loud. You made me feel concerned for you. You took my breath away with some of your words and you helped me see the world differently. So thank you to each and every one of you who entered the competition. I was really impressed by the quality of the poems submitted and choosing the winners was a difficult job. Poetic elements were on display and deftly used and there was stunning imagery that allowed me to feel and experience along with you. Things like repetition and rhythm buoyed this reader along and helped to embed your themes. And I've taken away metaphors, similes and symbols of profound beauty. And you offered every style of poem imaginable from free verse to limericks, villanelles, sonnets, synchrones, pansies, haiku, narrative. Your abilities to offer profound insights made me pause and wonder how could a seven-year-old or a five-year-old or a nine-year-old write that? So what was I looking for? What I want from a poem is I want to be moved. Firstly, I want to be moved up here in my mind. I hope to be taken away in my imagination, to be offered a different view or perspective of the world. And then I want to be moved here. I want to feel something. 
then I want a poem to be novel and new and original and creative and take risks. It must make me stop and think, whoa, I've never read anything quite like that before. And now I cannot stop thinking about it. Then the crafting must be there. So each word has fought for and earned its spot on that page and has been placed and spaced with care. Then those poetic elements are skillfully used in the right measures to bring about the effect of the poem. And then there's the editing. Really important part to ensure that grammar, spelling and punctuation are correct and consistent. And when I read them out loud, there's no clunking and the rhythm works and I can feel and sense your voice coming through that poem. So there were many poems that uh, achieved all of these things and there were many that showed incredible promise. So to all of those who entered, remember your poem doesn't need to be published or recognised in these prize lists to be of importance. I know many of mine fit that bill, but still you might carry that with you, that poem that you wrote, always. Or it might have been something that you needed to express and say at a certain time. Ultimately, that poem is yours and something only you could say. So I hope that poetry continues to be important in your life. And I thank you for entering and I encourage you to enter again next year. Winner of the Assisted Learning Primary Award is Cooper King Seach of Kaluas Public School, Kaluas, New South Wales, with his poem, My Aboriginal Teacher. Kaluas is barely a stone's throw from Gunnedah, 20 kilometres from where I'm speaking, and we're delighted to see such local participation on a national level. My Aboriginal teacher, storyteller, Aboriginal teacher, Aboriginal storyteller, DJ for Yama Gnu, hello, he teaches us the language and how to play this you do and all and about the land. He is fun, he teaches us about Aboriginal history. My wife will be people. He went through a ceremony and found out his totem was the brown snake. He has got a tail that means special things to him. My bug will be people down. His wish is where his fault. In this poem, we have an honouring of an Aboriginal teacher and woven through it are languages and cultures. Repetition is used to great effect and there is not a word too many or too few. Congratulations and thank you Cooper for your important poem. Winner of the Lower Primary Award is Damari Amarasing from the Caulfield Grammar School's Wheeler Hill campus in Melbourne, Victoria, with her poem, When I Went Walking. Hi, my name is Dehansi Amarasing. I'm a student learning at Caulfield Grammar School at Wheeler Hill campus in Victoria. Winning the Lower Primary Poetry Competition is just indescribable. I had a passion for poetry since the beginning of grade one. I wrote the poem when I went walking because I wanted to express how ordinary life can be disrupted with just a blink of an eye. My poem is titled When I Went Walking. When I went walking, 
Two sailors untied their boats. They were casually talking as they put on their coats. Stray cats roamed around. The foamy waves were crashing. The cat's ears perked up with every sound. The lighthouse was brightly flashing. An old man fully hunched his back. I rushed over to assist him. He had to carry a lumpy and heavy sack. His name was Kim. Suddenly, a bomb landed on a house. The war had just begun. Thank you. This is a poem that really took my breath away and surprised me. It's a narrative poem that uses striking imagery, well-employed rhyme, and speaks to war and the way that can interrupt our ordinary lives and perhaps going out simply for a walk one day. I can't stop thinking about this poem. Thank you, Dehansi, and congratulations. The winner of the Upper Primary Award is Allegra Clark of All Saints Anglican School, Merrimack, Queensland, with her poem, Comba Mary Dreaming. Hello, my name is Allegra Clark and I'm in Year 5 at All Saints Anglican School. This is my third year entering the Dorothea McKellar Poultry Competition and I'm super excited to be announced as this year's winner. Something rich and rare about this poem is that it is about the land on which I stand right now. You can make country. Cumberberry dreaming. For 40,000 years, our culture has survived. The oldest known people on our prized planet. Surviving through stories, through music, through dance. Dream time weaves itself into our beings. Ancestral songs flow through our veins. Numbered and denigum. Custodians of country who respect and protect the surrounds. The animals, the landscape, the language and people. Past, present and future. The Nigeria screeching in the sunny sky. To the Niganiba slipping beyond our feet. We cherish them all. Gali Mala Gali Dragon. I stand a proud Kumbaberry girl. Committed to my culture, my connection to land and dreaming. Yet... My reflection speaks a difficult truth. Sapphire eyes and paper dark hued skin contrast that of my father's elders. Flowing locks, not dissimilar to bark of an ancient ghost gum, portray my mother's heritage. Dundee Wonderjam. Displacement, disillusionment, disenchantment. Dream time remains within my soul, yet a larger dream calls. A dream that celebrates differences. A dream that unites our nation. The dream of acceptance for all people. This is a beautifully crafted poem that celebrates the culture of the Kumba Mary peoples and their country and their languages and traditions. And it juxtaposes this alongside other cultures, time, and when I read it, it brings me great hope, and I hope it will for all who read it. Thank you, Allegra, for this wonderful poem, and congratulations. Next is the David Marr Award presented by Mr. Ma, a former teacher and school inspector, to the best entry from a school which has less than 30 students. This year's winner is Paddy Harris of Rowena Public School, Rowena, New South Wales, with his poem, Planting. Rowena is a small village in far northwest New South Wales between the towns of Walgut and Moree, and the school is a repeat winner. Well done and keep up the poetry.
Hello, I'm Patty Harris from Rowena Public School, New South Wales. I'm very glad to have won the David Ma Awards section with my poem, Plenty. Lying in bed, rain pouring, water laying everywhere. It's going to be a good one, this one. Finally, the sun comes out and we're ready to go. Checking oil and tyre pressures full of fuel. The, the Turning the key, the engine comes to life. The planner's arms are folded tightly. Pushing the gear stick forward slowly, the tractor idles forward. The orange glow, the flashing lights and the radio blaring. Expanding the width of the plant, planner's reach. Fan turning on the back of the air cart. Checking the seed boots. All good. The tractor screams as I drop the planter into the ground. Turning hard, the whole rig shifts. Brrr! The tractor yells for help. Spinning tracks and moving nowhere. One more try, but alas, she doesn't budge. Waiting for, patiently for the paddock to dry. Sorry, old girl, we were too impatient for a crop. This is a fabulous narrative poem that employs memorable language and stark imagery that helps to bring to life the planting time on the farm through the metaphor of the tractor. Thank you, Patty, and congratulations. The Currumbeed Primary Award introduced last year to encourage entries from students within a 100 kilometre radius of Gunnada and sponsored by Daly Farming, goes to Eileen Murphy of Fairfax Public School, Malls Creek, New South Wales, with her poem, Namoy Menagerie. Hello, my name is Eileen Murphy and I'm a Year 6 student at Fairfax Public School in Moores Creek, which is near Nowbray, North West New South Wales. I am very proud in winning the Curran Bead Award in the Dorothy McKellar Poetry Competition, Namoy Menagerie. Below the Namoy's murky depths, a purple spotted gudgeon swims alone. Clusters of duckweed she weaves on through, avoiding each embedded river stone. The snaking river is showered with orange, oranges, pinks and reds, with the sunset glow changing the murky theme. Sitting underneath the ancient gums, I listen to the nearby bubbling stream. The tall gnarled gum trees stand proudly on the river's brink, swaying silently to the tune of the wind, thick thirsty roots spreading deeply to drink. The ivory moon rises above the ghostly gums, bright light glistens on the water's edge, Namoy River bathed in eeriness, a tangle of vines dangling from a moonlit ledge. At the waking of a new day, the early rays, the morning rays of sunlight filter through the trees. A crackle of black cockatoos erupt from the dawning sky, noisily squawking their wants and decrease. The vast array of flora and fauna, feasting from above and under, rich and rare in all their splendour, how blessed are we to share their wonder. This is an ode to the Namoy River, which uses exquisite turns of phrase, vivid imagery, and a gentle rhyme. Thank you, and congratulations, Eileen. The winner of the Primary Schools Award, which is judged on the best overall standard of entries, is the Redeemist Baptist School of North Parramatta, New South Wales. Redeemer has been a long time supporter of these awards and firmly believes in the importance of poetry. This award, which represents back-to-back -back wins, is recognition of their dedication to writing. Wonderful work. As a school, teachers and students alike, we are very grateful to have been given the opportunity to engage in poetic literary expression through the Dorothea McKellar Poetry Awards again this year. And what a great added bonus. We are all excited and thankful for the judge's acknowledgement with the 2021 Primary Schools Award. I'm sure that all participating schools would like to join with me in thanking 
the Dorothea McKellar Memorial Society for their stimulating contribution to young Australian literature every year. Thank you. They squint, they squirm. They snigger, they giggle. They get an idea and begin to wriggle. It starts at the toes and begins to grow. As the rhythm and the rhyme arrive just in time. What can I say that's worth a job about something I know and love a lot? They throw in a dash of punctuation and a pinch and a punch of personification. They add a teeny tiny touch of alliteration and beat their desks with syllabification. Give me a keyboard or a paper and pen. I've got to write it down before I lose it again. A metaphor comes flying off the page As hyperbole takes centre stage A simile is like adding the spice As sugar on a cookie Mmm, so nice On a mat appear we'll swish it along As the palm develops to a beautiful song What form shall it take? A sonnet or synquain? A haiku or a limerick? An ode or could train? Will I write in metre? Will I write an irony? Will I write rhyming couplets or a verse that's free? There are things to do and places to go. When I start writing poetry, I can't say no. I want my words to bring hope and show I care. So I create a poem rich and rare. I have chosen you because of the sheer quantity and quality of all those poems you submitted. There was great diversity amongst the poems and many of them made it onto short lists and ended up in winning categories. Thank you and keep up the great work. Congratulations to all those primary winners on their inspirational work. The past year has seen some major achievements by the Dorothea McKellar Society. Committee Secretary Owen Hasler tells us more. Firstly, we held an open day, which was held on the Saturday of the June long weekend at the former McKellar family homestead, Currumbooie. This event attracted well over a thousand visitors who were extremely impressed with the day and the opportunity to visit the property. The Dorothy McKellar for Poetry Society then had another innovative idea and they applied for funding through the Gunnedah Shire Council to take advantage of the Federal Government's Resilience Fund which was set up to support community groups during the long period of drought. The vision was to create a mural on the heritage listed maize mill silos in the middle of Gunnedah with an image that reflected Dorothea's importance and relationship to Gunnedah. There were many steps involved. Due to the heritage significance of the building, a development application had to be approved by Gunnedah Art Council, and the image had to be of an appropriate style and character to fit that heritage listing. Then we had to prepare the silo surface, which required major repair in order to create the best canvas before the commencement of the painting. Fortunately, we were able to engage internationally recognised Melbourne street artist, Fisco Cosnerin, who was selected by the Society to present the vision. Pisco applied his exceptional skills, talent and creativity over a one month period and this created a significant attraction for Gunnedah, highlighting its heritage and gives recognition to Dorothy McKellar, the Society and the National Poetry Awards. The artwork includes three key elements. Firstly, Dorothea as she appeared in a play when in her 30s, which is an image seen by many. Secondly, the words of the second verse of her famous and now iconic poem, My Country. And in the lower second of the image, there are pictures of farm activity, including the harvesting with an early model sunshine header and a large dray of wheat being drawn by draft horses. This has become another Dorothy McKellar legacy to our community, which is truly rich and rare. We now move on to the secondary section of the awards. 
judge of this section is Cheryl Clark from Victoria, who's been reading, writing and loving poetry for more than 30 years. As well as being a published poet of both adults and children's verse, she teaches poetry writing and edits and critiques poetry manuscripts. Hi, I'm Cheryl Clark and I was the judge for the secondary section of the Dorothea McKellar Awards. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to read poetry written by young Australian writers, even more so when they're high school students and keen to write. It can be easy to lose the enjoyment of reading and writing poems when you are deep into the demands of high school and homework. So I approached the judging of my senior categories with great anticipation and was richly rewarded. So many different topics with so many different voices speaking out using imagery and language and expressing ideas and passions. Perhaps not surprisingly, there weren't many poems about COVID-19. On the other hand, there were multiple poems about the environment reflecting what we've seen in the last few years with campaigns and protest marches by young people. While 2019 saw street marches, in 2020 the protests moved to their bedrooms and online networks, and then for many to writing poetry. I wish I could gather up all the poems I have read about this issue and force every politician in Australia to read them. The voices I heard in these poems are angry, passionate and devastated at the lack of action. Thus there were poems about drought, bushfires, dying wildlife and destroyed landscapes. Some poems about life on the farm were also reflections on the changes that have taken place with dust storms and dying crops. As always, poetry allows us to express ourselves in the sharpest, most evocative ways. However, other topics emerged as well. Relationships, the importance of family, school and simply how people treat each other with love or painful disdain. Some poems told stories, some happy many sad, the loss of life, the loss of a mind, the loss of a family elder to dementia or illness. All of these experiences are part of life and many of these poems touched me, some made me catch my breath. The variety of poems was part of the reading pleasure. I never knew if the next poem would be rhyming or free verse, whether a brave young poet would have a go at a complicated form like a villanelle or a sonnet. Sometimes funny poems made me laugh out loud. A few poets seem to have very low opinions of having to go to school. The optional theme of rich and rare did challenge some writers. It can be hard to take a phrase out of Dorothea's poem and not somehow end up sounding like her. While the speed of today's world, thanks to technology, can lead us to think a poem is a fast read, easy to skim and move on to the next thing. Long experience has taught me that the best poems are the ones you read several times and are rewarded with more discoveries each time. So it was with the winning and awarded poems. Some I read more than six or seven times, coming back to them over and over until I had made my decisions. This was truly rich and rare and totally rewarding to discover young poets whose work could stand beside any published poems I read elsewhere. Special congratulations go to those poetry-hearted teachers out there who continue to encourage and assist young writers with their poem making. It was clear that those teachers also encourage rewriting and tweaking and polishing as well to create the gems that were entered. My thanks to all of you young poets who wrote poems and made the effort to send them in this year. Sometimes the sending is the hardest part, putting yourself and your words out there for others to read. Keep reading and writing poetry. It will always reward and enrich you in ways you may not expect. It is a way of both finding your own voice and truly hearing that of others. Winner of the Learning Assistance Secondary Award are Matthew L. Shakti and Stephen Estefan, who attend the Maronite College of the Holy Family, Harris Park, New South Wales. They co-authored the poem, Rich and Rare, taking up this year's optional theme, and their poem is read by their teacher, Mrs. Susan Fisher. 
We are very proud of our students, Stephen and Matthew, for creating their beautiful poem, Rich and Rare, and we thank the Dorothy McKellar Poetry Foundation for giving such wonderful opportunities for all students. I've seen the boys start off in Year 7 as shy students um, who were hesitant to read aloud, despite overcoming some challenges and hesitancy in reading, with the strong support of the nuns, Sister Irene, staff, community and parents, they have grown up into fine young men. Stephen and Matthew have continued to show their love of animals. When working on the poem, in assistance over several hours, Stephen was able to mention and list his great love of native wildlife and was able to name so many types of bush creatures. He's even decided to move into working with animals as a career option and he regularly stays on his family's farm. Matthew has cheerily loved exploring the sounds of language and together with the support and encouragement of family and teachers, they have made a truly wonderful poem that reflects their love of the rich and rare wildlife and flora of Australia. Stephen and Matthew are both rich and rare students and we are so proud they're from Maronite College and they sincerely thank you so much for the award and their families are thrilled. Well done. Rich and rare. The eastern greys are reds are in the grasslands at sunset. Way up high in the eucalyptus trees, koalas are rich and rare. And the lyrebirds that mimic and mock, chitter and chatter, squawk and walk. Screaming cockatoos with shiny golden crests, colourful rosellas of rich greens and reds. Beware, beware, the brown snake slithers through the silky sand. Through the dreaming of no man's land. Down in the billabongs and creeks, the platypus shows off his shiny beak. Across this vast land, mountains like monsters and deserts of sand, the tall ghostly snow gums, the bristle bottle brush, dingoes of all sorts howling at the moon, waiting until sunrise. Although this poem describes familiar animals and flora of Australia, it does so in a way that brings the country alive. Lovely descriptions and choices of words that create a sense of rhythm and delight. I particularly enjoyed the way so many senses were used, especially sound and colour and the active verbs. Great work, Stephen and Matthew. Next is the winner of the Junior Secondary Award, who is Olivia Campbell of Presbyterian Ladies College, Burwood in Melbourne. And her poem is Revels with Ravenous Ghosts. Hello, my name is Olivia Campbell. I'm a year eight student at Presbyterian Ladies College, Melbourne, and I am absolutely thrilled to have won the junior secondary category with my poem, Revels with Ravenous Ghosts. Writing has always been an integral part of my life, and it is such an honor to be recognized for my passion. I'm lucky enough to live in an area with landscapes much like those described by Dorothea McKellar and I have come to my favourite creek to perform. I hope that you enjoy. Opportunities like this truly are rich and rare. Revels with ravenous ghosts. Little girl, you know nothing of hunger. We have eaten ourselves for a hundred years, scoffing our own fat and muscle and bone. We have regurgitated life and swallowed it till it became all bile. It is time to feed us. Burn your bitter flowers and sot with stones. Smash these rotting caskets. Push away this icy soil. Curse your tears and their false syrup. We want to smear greasy salmon across our tongues and juice the flabby flesh of the moon to guzzle the froth of the snow, sweet and sharp, burning our throats. Robe us with down of peaches and silk of corn, bedazzle us with fat yolk pearls, golden and gleaming. Let them grow old and rank as we waltz on our graves. For what is life if not eggs, if not sulphur? Whisk the sun into an omelette and wrap us in its flowing folds. 
crack our teeth on chicken cartilage, smooth and iridescent, meaty mother of pearl. Spin our blood into a ruddy candy floss that stains your fingers pink. Let it rain wine. May we drown with bloated bellies and slurred laughter. Sew us a skin of dough. Wring oil from the eucalyptus and grease our creaking joints. Feed us a flask of mackerel eyes, vulgar in their stare, so we may be all seeing. Tongues, hooves, tails, breasts, legs, udders, all. But please, no wins. We need not to be reminded of lost promises. No, we do not crave your pity. Fill our hollows with malawa, rugala, hala, hamantash, and halfa, matzas, blinters, ma, ma, ma. But what's wrong, little girl? Why do you shake? Where is the flavour of adulation on your tongue? Why is there bile? Do you hate your history? Or have you forgotten? Yes. The Shabbat candles have never glowed in your eyes. You have never seen a shofar or spun a dreidel or smelt your grandmama's latkes. Bony brittle babe. Now we see you. The lack of you. Little girl, you know too much of hunger. Come down. Do not be afraid. Let us teach you, feed you, for you are too young to be hollow. We will braid hollow with your hair. We will flambe the Iron Age, or frost the Renaissance, or give you whichever time is most delicious. We will grate our bones to latke dough for you, little girl. We will deep fry the sky and serve to you in sweet puffs that taste the perfumes of generations of a mother's kiss. You will taste every when and everywhere and understand that all of it is home. This is how to measure oil in eggshells. This is how to step grapes to wine. This is how to remember. Together, we will build a hut of horizet. Honey mata, apple bricks. We will stack together our stories and we will brew back our history and we will all be finally full. Thank you. This is such an impressive poem, rollicking and dark at the same time with so many great words and startling images. The great title sets us up. We're ready to revel our way through the poem. Still, Olivia controls the narrative and the poem comes to a strong conclusion. It's definitely worth reading more than once. Congratulations, Olivia. The winner of the Senior Secondary Award is Pippa Atwell, of the Presbyterian Ladies College in Peppermint Grove, Perth, with her wonderful poem, Creatures of Digits. Hi, I'm Pippa Atwell. I'm in Year 11 at Presbyterian Ladies College, Perth, and I was over the moon to find out that I'm the senior secondary winner with my poem, Creatures of Digits. Winning this award means a lot to me, especially as it's an award named after such a strong and inspiring female poet who had such a deep love of Australian country and the natural landscape. Zero bones. I dance with the thickness of time in fever dreams, a steady seep of oily tendrils. My live and boneless body finds sanctum in a glazed glass jar or untenanted crevasse. I am the drifter of Davy Jones's locker. One beak rigid amongst layers of supple flesh. I dream of snaring saline game between gossamer web and scissor-like talon, leaving minced crab and beak-worked whelk in a trail of barbarity. Two eyes, large as fear. My camera lens iris a silken slit of slate, the hadal zone when you can't tell which way is up. Look closely, you will unearth my timorous guise, the diminutive reincarnation of my fabled forefather. Three hearts. Briny blue blood oozes through my veins. A smouldering fire searing amongst frozen constellations of seafarers' souls. Singing like si sirens, it is siphoned by a triad of tidal pulses. 
the brittle balance that keeps me suspended. Eight legs, webbed and boldly striped, propel me through the water, skating on nautical silk. I am the aquatic arachnid. Come too close, they will unfurl into a net that stretches far beyond the tiny boundaries of your courage. Nine brains, muses of hunting, praying, deception. My octarchy of savage spry limbs administered by intellect. The capital and cunning commander. 2,240 suckers. Let them bind us, I am yours. Stay with me, then leave. In 360 tides I will be gone, for solitude is my, ch- my curse. 37,360 colour-changing cells. I will absorb hue and light meticulously. Scuffle with me and I will release my pride of paint. Black as serenity, dense as nightmares. You'll be left gaping at phantom limbs. This is a stunning poem. It uses amazing facts about the octopus combined with great imagery to create a poem I couldn't stop rereading. Every time I read it, I discovered something new, and I even went and Googled a couple of things. Right from the first line, zero bones, the poem captures the reader, a deserving winner. Well done, Pippa. Next is the Currumbead Secondary Award for the best poem entered within a 100 kilometre radius of Gunnedah. And I'm delighted to announce the winner is Holly Monday of Gunnedah High School, Gunnedah, New South Wales, with her poem, Killers of the Night. Great stuff, Gunnedah. Hi, I'm Holly. I'm thrilled to be a winner today of the Dorothy McKellar Prize. The town I live in has a silo of a painted tribute of Dorothy McKellar and her My Country poem. My poem is called Killers of the Night. I see dead, dark, damp dogs. Some of us cry in cold, cramped corners. Birds are bright in bare cages with wet wings. My family rot in front of me. We lay in the dark, dead night. Dead. I was right. They killed us while we were sleeping. They killed so they could keep warm. But the humans are too strong for us. Some humans go to jail. Some do not. The human killers roam free and kill us for meat. The ghost of killed barn animals haunt the dark, cold, scary night. Humans think that this is right for them, to live longer and stronger. My poem is about animal abuse. Thank you. This is a skillfully written poem that turns us around and shows us an unexpected and bleak point of view. We begin by thinking the poem is about us, humans and yet it is not at all. It does what a really good poem should. Shows us the world in a surprising and thought-provoking way. Great work Holly. And lastly the winner of the Senior Secondary Schools Award for the best overall standard of entries and this is a fantastic achievement goes to St Thomas More College Sunnybank Queensland. At STMC we have a writing club that consists of about like 100 students but 30 of those people really just write consistently. It's a place to go and have fun and write whatever you want and share your stories and poems with people around you. We enter like poetry competitions and writing competitions. What I enjoy most about writing club is that I get to like have conversations with other people who are really interested in writing like I am. I like reading other people's work and seeing the thing I enjoy most about Writing Club is the creativity that I can bring and that it's an inclusive and non-judgmental space. I like Writing Club because you get to talk to your friends and express writing and share all your writing with them. So then you can get feedback on stuff. I mainly write poems. Poems, short stories and fan fiction. Some members of Writing Club have even made short films based on their poems. Awake. In a dream that won't let me be 
where an old foe stands in front of me. Birds chirp their tunes. The fox takes its first breath. I write poems about social issues and my life experiences. I write poems about like sometimes personal stuff and sometimes like just random objects and like how they're like significant. Anything that comes to my head by getting inspired by something. I get my inspiration from props and stuff. Anytime I see something in nature that inspires me. My inspiration has to be Emma. Um, I get my inspiration from the things around me and the people I meet. I get my inspiration from how I'm feeling at the time. Other books, people's writing. I write because it's enjoyable and it gives me a chance to explore more creative outlets. I write because I love reading and I feel like when I'm reading, I kind of go away to another world. And it's kind of cool that when I'm writing, I feel like if somebody else reads that, that I might give that impression to them. I write because it's fun. I write because I like it and it's a way of expression. I write because it's something that can help me take my mind off things at the time. It's just a way to get things off your chest. I write like at least once a week. I try to write every day, but I'm not very good at that. Once every couple of days. Generally about once a week. We are so excited to win this award and thank the Dorothy and McKellar Poetry Awards for everything they do. This was an extremely hard category to judge. I had a huge list next to me of the schools that the poets came from and I had to keep adding to it as well as adding my comments and thoughts. Each time I thought I had a winner, I would read a huge bunch of great poems from another school. It made me very happy as a poet to realise how many dedicated teachers out there are encouraging their students to read and write poetry. Eventually I chose St Thomas More College. The poems from their students were adventurous, passionate and well crafted and would make a great collection for the school to publish if they wanted to. Well done all of you at St Thomas More. We're now nearing the end of our 2021 presentation ceremony. You need to know that these awards are largely overseen by a volunteer committee who give their time and ideas generously. We also have our all important project officer, Brittany Riley, who is the first point of contact for many of you. She keeps this competition running and this year has handled the ever-changing cirques with ease. Thank you, one and all. And also to our sponsors, the Federal Department of Education and our steadfast supporters, Gunnedah Shire Council, Whitehaven Coal, Bogabri Coal, McKellar Excavations and Crawford Boots. Woolworths and Booktopia have also come on board to help with prizes. We're extremely appreciative of your help. I have to say, this has been a novel way of presenting the awards from my home but we were determined that your literary efforts were recognised with whatever it takes. Poetry takes on new meaning in these unpredictable times. And I can see that in some of the entries that I've had the pleasure of reading. I hope it offers refuge, comfort, satisfaction, and even fulfilment from the tumult around us. Each of those 7,600 entries we're award-winning in different ways. So keep on writing, and we look forward to getting your entries next year.